John chapter number 5. If you got it, say amen. amen. Verse number 1, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, but that's the having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, of halt, of withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Then whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity, notice this, thirty and eight years. I'm not too smart, but you put that together, that's a long time. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, now look at this question, wilt thou be made whole? I wrote here, right here inside my Bible, I wrote his heart was withered, so was his limbs. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Preacher, if you don't mind, pray for us before we preach. Oh God, touch us this morning, Lord. God, Lord, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for souls that have been Amen. Thank God. God, thank you for what you're going to do in Chile. God, thank you for what you're going to do around here today. Amen, God. Now, Father, we've come to the point of the service where our focus and our hearts and our attention need to be on what thus saith the Lord. Father, I pray you to anoint your God, man. touch us this morning, Lord. I pray you empower him from on high. Yeah. I pray you fill him with the Holy Ghost of God. Give him unction. Father, we pray you bring us yes, to the Lord. those things he's been faithful to study. Pour out of him the very message of God. May it pierce our hearts. God, I pray for this congregation. Oh, Jesus, God, you give somebody else another being, chance, you Lord. You know our downsetting and our uprising. <coughs> Lord, you know the number of yeah, people on our head. Uh, yeah. Father, you know what we say. Oh, God, touch today. today, Lord. Lord, if there's one here today cold on God. Oh, uh, Jesus. Complacent, uh, I pray today you'd repent. Yeah, man. Uh, yes, God. God. I pray today they'd leave out. Uh, set on fire. Yeah, man. God, uh, God, if there's somebody here today hurting. Uh, oh, Jesus, touch him, God. Yeah, man, and God. Lord, Hallelujah. That would soothe them. That would help them. Yes, Father. That would encourage them. God, if there's someone here low, I pray my, 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 my. God, if hey, there's man. here, Lord, lost without God. Oh, God, I save them this morning. the grace of God. They've heard the singing. They've seen the Oh, Jesus. But they don't understand what it's all about. I pray the Lord. Oh, God, touch it. Yes, Father. Through conviction, through love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. God touch us this morning, Lord. Oh God, keep them out. And God, do your office work in our midst, and we'll bless you. For it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious and precious and the name that's Hallelujah. We pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We find here in John chapter number five a very, very familiar passage of scripture. I remember when I moved to North Carolina, we had a place up there uh, called the Bed, the Bath, and Beyond. Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? Some of you ladies all of a sudden felt the Holy Ghost right there. Uh, man, I walked in there, Brother Doug, and I, uh, man, I walked in there, looked at that place, and they had all this stuff. And I was reminded here this morning of, I'm going to preach this thought this morning a bed, a bath, and a beyond. A bed, a bath, 
and a beyond. May I say by way of introduction, there was a bath here that was involved. You say, preacher, what you're talking about? Verse number 2 and the verse through verse number 4. The Bible says, Now there is at Jerusalem by a sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. God gave a specific title for this uh, bath, this, this pool here this morning. He gave a specific title. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. Yeah. A house of mercy. May I say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad there was a spot in my life yeah. where there was given to me a house of mercy. Yeah. I believe a lot of times we have gotten over the things that God has done in our life. We, we can sing, give Him the glory, and we just sit there like a knot on the log. I wonder where we would be this morning without the goodness of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. I wonder how many drunks would be here this morning. I wonder how many people would literally be inside the house of God hadn't it been for a place of mercy. I'm glad God will save the drunks. I'm glad God will save the drug heads. I'm glad God will save the harlots. But I'm also very thankful God will save a preacher's kid. I'm glad there was a place of mercy in my life. There is the title of this place. Notice the timing of this place. The Bible said there in verse number 4, For an angel went down, notice this now, at a certain season. And these guys, these ladies that were laying by the pool, they, they could have they could have jumped in any time they wanted to, but nothing would ever happen in their life. Brother Peter, they could have got in and swam around. My, my sister's got a pool now. Y'all forgive her. Say amen. We enjoy that thing. Man, go splash, make cannonballs. Uh, man, they could have got in this thing anytime they wanted to. Brother Christian, but nothing would ever happen in their life. May I say this, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot force change in your life. You can go to all the AA meetings you want to. You can go get all the mental help you want to. But unless Jesus tugs at your heart and God convicts you of your sin, you're not going to be changed. I, I've seen people that, Brother, Brother Doug, that they, 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 man, they get it in their mind, they change, but their heart never changes. It don't last. There's a certain season, Brother Josh, that the angel's going to come down. The Bible does not specifically say, but let me say one thing about seasons in the Christian life. I believe we all go through four seasons in our life as a Christian. I believe, number one, there is winter time in the Christian's life. I'll be honest, I wish everything was, my nanny used to say, hunky-dory. I wish I could say, Brother Doug, that every time we come to church, that, Brother Doug, everything's going to be great and everything's going to be glorious. But, but the truth of the matter is, sometimes we got to go through those dead, man, nothing's growing, nothing's happening. Miss Kathy, you know what wintertime is? It's a time where everything dies and nothing's going on. I'm in the grass field and I, I get to treat grass for a living. What a blessing that is. I know it's so exciting. But man, what I learned in the dormant season of grass, things on top may not be growing. Things on top, that grass, y'all got a bunch of bluegrass around here. And what that bluegrass does when you plant it in the fall, you know what happens? It's going to dig deep in the wintertime. You know what wintertime is supposed to do in our lives? It may not seem like a lot of things going on in our life, but we're supposed to dig deeper in the root. And that root's not in you. That root's not in your preacher. That root is in Jesus Christ. There is a winter time, but I'm, I'm glad for springtime in the Christian life. Man, all those old things are gone. Brother Phil, and that new stuff starts taking off. I'm glad to see new people inside the house of God. I'm glad when people get saved. Man, the, just the freshness of the glory of God. But may I say, there are summer times in the Christian life. There's been many a times where I'd grab this Word of God and it seems like heaven's brass and nothing's going on. Maybe you're more super spiritual than I am, but there has been times in my life, it seems like now more than often there are dry times in my life. And what I've learned about summertime, if you don't get no rain, things start to hurt. Things start to dry up. You're talking about your grass yesterday. Those things start to withering up and drying up. But the sometimes God will send a summertime in our life. Things aren't happening. But you know what? These men were in a season when they didn't know what's going on. They were faithful. 
These folks, it didn't matter if it was spring, summer, winter, fall. You know what was on, Brother Doug? These people knew there was something about that pool. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself but you know if they would have said well maybe this day what if this man said well it's hot out here I don't man maybe I just need to go maybe I need to get somebody to take me home you know what he did he stayed by the stuff there's a lot to be said about faithfulness the timing of this bath notice the touching of this bath the touching found there in verse number 4 for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. Notice this now. And troubled of the water. Yeah, yeah. I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I've seen enough what man can do. Preacher, I'm up to hear about what man can do. Brother Phil, Brother Josh, I'm up to hear to see what man can do. My God, we don't need another somebody to touch us. We don't need a man's approval. We don't need Donald Trump's approval. You know what our churches are missing? It is missing the raw, natural touch of God. Mama, let me say this. Those kids will never be what they need to be with your touch on their life. But honey, if they can get the touch of God on their life, things will change. I've been in churches and I've been in services and we talked about this where there is no touch let me say it is a sad place to be when the touch of God is not around do you say preacher why why are you screaming your lungs out this morning why do you do what you do I say why brother John does what he does it just might be that very service you come in and the sweet touch of God will move in and the almighty of God will move in on the scene and begin to touch lives I tell you why I do what I do I'm not looking to be a millionaire I'm not looking on the lawn care company I want to preach the word of God and give it everything I've got you know why because it might be that very Sunday morning I walk in the house of God and the heavens open and God himself comes down and touches why do you go back to church on Sunday night I'm going to enjoy myself right here is that alright why do you go back to church on Sunday night because it might be that very service the touch of God comes down preacher why do you go on Wednesday night I tell you why it might be that very night the sweet hand of God comes down and touches that church I'm glad for that Wednesday night. Man, my daddy was a preaching. Had the touch of God on him. I got saved and born again because of the touch of God. You know what's missing in our pulpits? The touch of God. People care more about an outline and instead of an inline to heaven. You know what we need in this day and hour? We need the touch of God. These men were, and these ladies were, man, just tore up and they needed some help. The only thing that was going to change their lives was the touch. Can I say you can be baptized in the river and know every tadpole by name. But if the Spirit of God has never touched your life, you're just as lost as you can be. You can have your name on the church membership and just be lost. You can come up here and sing in a choir and then raise your hand and thank God for that. But if there's never been the touch of God on your life, there's something wrong. I've seen a lot of what man can do. Man will mess things up. Man will get in the way. But honey, there's just something about the touch of God. Now think about my dad. Man, he's been at it a long time. But I'll never forget, preacher, it was around Christmas time. And Brother John Lindsay, y'all know this, man, dad, been preaching the word of God. Brother Doug, been faithful to the word of God. And I'll be honest, I wish every service was, what's the word, just out of the bank, so to speak. But every once in a while, you'll get a Mississippi experience. Every once in a blue, I don't know, man, with me and preacher talk about this all the time. Y'all just had to been there, man. It was like the God Himself just come and sat in that room. Man, one of my buddies, God, was wrapped up in the curtains. Your preacher was laying prostrate on the floor in the bathroom, out laying out. I had pillows covering my head. We didn't know we was crying, we was laughing. You know what made a difference in my life? It wasn't a touch of Greg Phillips. It wasn't a touch of Mama Joyce. It wasn't a touch of Victory Baptist Church. It was 
touch of God. You know what I want in my life? I don't want man's approval. I don't care if you approve of me or not. The only thing that matters to me is not a big house. It's not man the best life. It is the touch of God on my life. I believe we're so consumed with everything else but the touch of God. We want man's approval. We want my grandmas and grandpas and my mamas and daddies. Boys, can I tell you all this morning, the only thing that's going to matter in your life, it's not about trophies, and I appreciate you doing those things. The only thing that's going to matter in every one of your lives is the touch of God. The next Harold B. Sattler could be sitting right here on this front row. The next Oliver B. Green could be sitting right here on this front row. No telling what God has planned for those young men. You know why you come to church on Sunday? Why do you come to church on Friday night and a Saturday night? Because it might be that very time the angel of God comes down and touches one of them boys' life and God moves. Brittany, you know why y'all keep going on and investing in those kids? Because the hand of God might be on your boys and God might call one of them to preach and man with a touch of God change some lives Paul Paul it's not about money it's not about trying to move on but good gracious it's not about the things of this world it's not about having nice things it's not about going to a 9 to 5 and call quits it is about the raw natural touch of God it is the touch of God Anybody else could have went down there in that pool and stirred the water. But it wasn't going to change nobody's lives. I got Parker, man. Y'all met him when he came up here for that wedding. He's a big old monster of a boy. I got May May and Hayden and Hopper. And man, they, they like my money. Somebody help me right there. Say amen. They love you. And when they want something, they're very, very sweet to you. I love you. And they give you a little hug. I mean, you, you, you can't resist. It's over. But you know what I've learned? I've learned a lot of things, Brother Doug, just through them little kids. Well, man, if I was to get in front and I was to pass away, I would hate for them to walk by and say, man, I met Uncle Jeffrey. He used to have the touch of God. I'm really trying to move on. God's saying something right here. I'd hate for them to walk by, Lindsay, and say, oh, Ben and, and Emery, they walk by and say, man, Lindsay... She used to sing with the touch of God. She used to have the touch of God. And I'm very careful, preacher, that a lot of times in our life, we do it without God, Brother Josh. And it's null and it's void. You get in that Sunday school class, and man, you used to be fired up. You used to be, man, wanting the touch of God. You used to get in there and study. I really, this ain't in the notes. I'm just trying to mind God. You used to get back there and get along with God. And man, have the touch of God on your Sunday school. But now you've got stale. Now you got used to it. You think you don't need God. Honey, let me say this. Without God himself, I wouldn't be able to. Even though I got my feet massaged last night, hallelujah, I still couldn't get out of bed this morning without the good hand of God uh, awaken me can I say I don't want to ever do nothing in my own power I don't want to wake up without God I don't want to go to work without God I don't want to do what I do without God I don't want to go to bed without God I don't want to be an uncle without God I want to be a godly man with a touch of God on my life we care about having everybody else's approval. It's not about what you sound like. You don't have to be perfect, honey. God just wants somebody with a touch of God. A touch of God. One man said this, I was reading after. There was just a step between this impotent man and the cure. One step between him and and the cure you know what I found this morning that the only thing that's going to appease people's life is the touch of God we got this thing figured out well we only need the touch of God on Sunday we got this thing figured out. I'm telling you, some of you, you used to be fired up and study for a long time. You used to pray for those kids. You used to pray for your church. And now you've done it so long, you think you got it figured out. Let me remind you, you cannot do it without the touch of God. Your ability, your talent, you will fall. You will fall 
flat on your face. Honey, we need some here in Emmanuel Baptist Church. We need some daddies with the touch of God. We need some mamas with the touch of God. We need some papas with the touch of God. We need some mamas with the touch of God. We need some kids with the touch of God. My God, we need God's touch in this day and hour. There is the bath. But let me say this. There is the bed found. Here's number five. The Bible says, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. The Bible says this was a destination. There was a certain man there. The Bible says there was the duration. He was there 30 and 8 years. Notice this. He said he was destitute. I want you to see this. Verse number 7. The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, notice this next phrase. This bothers me. Sir, I have no man. May I charge the church this morning that this world, they might, they, they may, they might not say they need us, but we are the only hope this world has. For the first time in a couple of years, probably two, three years, victory. I've come up here, man. I got excited about going to visit them with y'all. I, I even copied y'all. I got the same things y'all have. Man, for the first time in probably three, four years, our church is going on visitation today. I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. But may I say this? It is a sad day and hour when people in this community and people in our families say, I have no help. Let me ask you this. Aren't you glad, brother was talking about this morning, aren't you glad somebody came to where you were and told you about God? Aren't you glad, Miss Annette, somebody, Miss Brittany, that come by our way, Brother Phil, and gave us the gospel? This man's stuck. He's destitute. He has no hope left in this world. Can I say, you've tried everything. And yet you feel like it's hopeless. You've tried to do right and yet you can't. And you feel like you're destitute. Let me say this. Not only was he destitute, but this man was disappointed. Look there in verse number 7. Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. Notice this. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. May I say, ladies and gentlemen, there will be disappointments in our life. Could you imagine that man? He no doubt had his hands and he couldn't walk, but I believe with all my heart, the tile or rock, whatever was there, I believe, Brother John, he was crawling. Man, the angel was coming down. Man, the touch of God was coming. This man's about to get some help and the excitement in his heart. Man, there's the angel. I'm about to get in. And all of a sudden, before he touched in, Brother Jordan, Somebody else got it. Let me ask you this this morning. Are you disappointed the way things have turned out in your life? Let me ask you this. Have you ever prayed for something and somebody else get what you're praying for? I'm praying for my kids, preach, but it seems like somebody else's kid gets the prayer that you're praying for. Preacher, I'm praying for my family that God would do this. And it seems like God's doing it for somebody here. Let me say this right here. The devil is really good about when disappointments come in our life to get in our mind and to mess us up. You know what I learned, Brother Josh, that disappointments are God's appointments. Say, preacher, things haven't turned out the way I want them to. Maybe you come here this morning and you're disappointed in life. Maybe things haven't come out. And man, you've been trying your best. Mama, daddy, you've been trying your best. And it seems our life has thrown you a curveball. And it seems like you keep on striking out. And disappointment comes. And, and the more you come to church, it seems like the worse it gets. But may I say your disappointment is an opportunity for God to work. You may come in discouraged this morning. You may come in overwhelmed and disappointed because things had not worked out. Honey, can I remind you, you don't need a pool. We got the well of living water. You don't need some man-made thing. Honey, we got God in our lives. This man was so focused on everybody else getting help but him. Psalms 118, the Bible said, It is better to trust in the Lord 
Then to put confidence, man, you want to get discouraged? I'll tell you the main key to get discouraged. Look at people. My dad's told me over and over and over in the ministry, if you want to stay discouraged, look at people. I wonder how many people here this morning are disappointed. Things have happened in other people's lives. Dads are getting saved over there. Moms are getting saved over there. Prodigals are coming home over there. But it seems like the more you give to God, the bigger the disappointment gets. And may I say disappointment, Brother Josh, and in his mind, what if he'd have got this attitude? Well, I'm just going to give up. But you know what happened, Brother Doug? That season came around. I about feel a preaching coming on. Yeah, watch my time. I feel it coming on, my Lord. One season come by and he missed it. But guess who's at the next season where the trouble of the water showing up? Here's old boy, hallelujah. Here's old boy that can't walk. He ain't got no help, but hey, the strike two comes along. All of a sudden, Josh, hallelujah unto God. All of a sudden, another disappointment comes. Brother Doug, and all of a sudden, another time comes. The angel's coming down. He said, man, I get there. And may I say, you're at the best place you can be this morning. Yeah, you may be disappointed. Maybe God didn't answer your prayers Friday. Maybe God didn't answer your prayers Saturday but you're back on a Sunday morning and it might just be the good hand of God will come down and touch this place and you get made whole hallelujah this man was faithful during his disappointment may I say this today may God help us to remain faithful in our disappointment well preacher my prayers aren't getting answered be faithful God's not moving right now, preacher. Be faithful. Say, why be faithful? Because there's a bath and there's a bed. Or maybe I'll say this today, there's a beyond. Say, preacher, why why does it pay to be faithful? I'll tell you why. Verse number four, the latter end, there's the opportunity that awaited. The opportunity that awaited was found in verse number four. And whosoever, then first after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had that man showed up that day said man this could be my day this could be the very moment that I get to walk again may I say you come in this morning we should have the attitude man this is going to be my day the prodigal comes home man this is going to be the day the opportunity that awaited let me say this a lot of people think they can find opportunity on Lake Hartwell down there at home on Sunday morning just hang with me right here a lot of people, preachers, think they can find the opportunity that awaited everywhere else but the house of God. Right. Right. Amen, amen. Hey. The truth of the matter is, this is where we get our help. Yeah. This is where we draw strength from. Hey. This is where, mama, that prodigal's going to come home. This is where that daddy you've been praying for is going to get saved. It's not going to happen at Walmart. It's not going to happen at Bojangles. Somebody say amen. It happens at the house of God. The opportunity that awaited. Notice the multitude there in verse number 3. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Not only was there a multitude, there was a mess. Look there at verse number 3. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. A blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. May I say this morning, there's many of us here this morning that have got problems. Anybody got a problem this morning? Anybody got things that's bothering you? There was a mess here. These guys had no idea. I love what Psalms 147, verse number 3, He healeth the broken and hard and bindeth up their wounds. Isaiah 61, 1, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek He that sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives of the opening of the prison to them of that are brown. It's the opportunity that awaited. This could be His moment. This could be His time. This could be the very moment the touching is going to come to His life. Look there, verse number 8. Jesus saith unto him. You know what I love about God? He is always on time. Y'all get that when you get home. I'll never forget, preacher, a few, few, just about a year or so ago, we were sitting in our living room. I walked upstairs and I looked at my mom and dad and I could tell there was something wrong. 
on their face. I'll say this, it's hard to hide it when something's bothering you. Preacher, I walked in that room that morning and, I, and the snow was coming down for the first time in forever, thank God. Brother Josh, I looked at my mom and dad, I said, something's not right. And this is to God be the glory. I, Miss Brittany, I, I looked at mom and dad, I said, what's going on? They said, things have happened with Holly and Brent. Things, Holly and Brent were about in a mess. Preacher, and, and for, the, for, the, for the world of me, for the world of me, the first thing I asked myself in my heart, I said, God, you know my dad don't need nothing else on his plate. I looked at their face of disappointment. I looked, I know y'all don't have disappointments up here. I know bad stuff don't happen in Kentucky, but down there at home, honey, disappointment just keeps on rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. Miss Lindsay, I looked at him. I said, Brother Doug, and you, you know, Dad, he probably called you the opportunity that was awaited. But then I got, I looked at them, and I'll be honest with you, in my flesh, in my flesh now, hang with me here, in my flesh, I wanted some boxing gloves, and I wanted to go handle business. Can I please get an amen right there? Maybe y'all more spiritual than I am. A preacher, that disappointment I could see hurt. May I say this this morning, some of you in here, you got family that are hurting this morning. I can tell it on your face. And in our flesh, Brother Josh, we want to handle that disappointment. I looked, I look, my, my flesh, I went downstairs, I started breathing hard. I was fat back then, praise God. I was really big. I was just breathing hard. I said, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I really, honest for God, I'll tell you how bad it was. I wanted to go preach and get a boxing glove on, put a, put a big old metal tip in it and knock his face off his head. That's even possible. I don't even know if that's even possible. But I was going to try. I was so mad because of disappointment set in. You know what I want to do? I wanted to handle it. I looked at my dad and mom. I said, man, man, it just seems like one thing after another. I watched for weeks go by. And then I, I was with my sister. They got to the point, Brother John, Miss Lindsay, where I was about to go buy a house with my sister. But Brother Doug, I was about to honestly be the dad in the situation but with my sister. And she, she just had little Hayden. And man, she was just a cutie. She wasn't too cute when she was born. But now she's getting cuter. Man, just a cute man, a little rascal. And I watched Harper there, that little girl. Let me say this right here. Let me say this right here. You're not the only one being affected in your disappointment. When things don't go our way, you're not the only one suffering. I looked at that little girl. She's about five at the time. And I, she asked me every night. I'd go over there and I'd read her books. And I tried to be the very best I could. I'd go to their house. I'd hold that little baby. Holly was trying to run a house and take care of family. And disappointment set in. I'd go over there and hold that baby. And Holly would just sit there and cry and cry and cry. And Harper would say, where's my daddy at? You told my disappointment, honey. You talking about want to get full of the flesh and want to rock somebody's world? I'm the brother, man. I, I could imagine how my dad felt. The disappointment that set in. But you know, man, I got so bad, preacher. I, Holly asked me to go to the lawyer, the, the, the courthouse with her. And the only reason I'm saying this is because there, there's a good happy ending to it. Yeah. Brother Phil, I'll never forget walking in that courthouse and, man, talking about people who was married, Brother Josh, and, man, that they're supposed to be loving. Me and my sister walked up that courthouse. Brent had his family over here, and me and Holly were all by ourselves. Brother James, as soon as we walked up the steps, there was a group of his family. They all turned their backs to us like we were a bunch of slobs. Told my disappointment. I'm sitting there trying to be encouragement for my sister, Miss Lindsay. I'm sitting there trying to be there for disappointment. She walked in that courtroom along. I sat out there and kept on doing evil eyes. Y'all more spiritual than I am. Somebody help me there. I stick my tongue out there. What? Nah, 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 boo, boo. I'm, now I'm trying to be spiritual as I can. And the Holy Ghost of God. I was sitting there all by myself in a little chair. And this is what God told me. He said, Jeffrey, I am good about coming in in disappointments. 
Man, we walked out there and Holly got what she wanted. She won. Man, had it, man. And, and I watched God, brother. Brother Phil, I watched God for the next few months of them girls' lives. I'd hold that little baby girl. Man, I'd sit there and I'd say, Hayden, Harper, you don't understand. Hayden, you don't understand what's going on right now. But I want you to know Uncle Jeffrey loves you. I'd grab that little baby and I'd, we'd be out to eat somewhere and I'd, I'd be walking in the parking lot talking to a little baby that couldn't understand a word I said. But the only thing I knew, hallelujah, I got a word from God. And no matter what disappointment was going to come, no matter if daddy didn't ever come back, that little baby girl was going to be all right because she had God on her side. We was walking around Texas Roadhouse one night and I had May May and Hayden I was out there in the parking lot had one bald head in this hand one bald head I was walking around people probably thought I was drunk and messed up on something I was out there brother Josh just taking them little girls I said girls I love you I said, girls, I know it's tough. I, I know disappointments. You, I kid you not, when we get to heaven, you can go look at it on God's video camera. I was out there in that parking lot with them two babies walking around. I said, girls, I want to let you know, no matter what you go through, no matter what may come your way, I want you to know Uncle Jeffrey loves you. And they're sitting there slobbering, coming down, not understanding the word I'm saying. But honey, I want them to know there's a God that loves them. There's a God that cares about them. No matter what may come their way. I'm glad, Miss Kathy, we have a God who is faithful. Disappointments come. I'm not a man of before God. I stand here amazed tonight, this morning. My brother in law, God convicted his heart. He got things, number one, right with God. Say, man, that's the way it should be. Then he called my sister one day. Brother Doug, and he wanted to talk to my sister. Say, preacher, why are you saying all that? Because that was a disappointment. But may I say, disappointments are God's appointments. I watched the other Sunday night, preacher. I went down there. I went down there, man, and heard my brother-in-law that was jacked up his life in disarray grab a Bible, mount a pulpit, and preach the Word of God. See how they get that? I watched that boy who everybody else gave up on. Somebody help me here. Nobody else gave. I feel a preaching coming on. I watched that disappointment in their love. I watched him grab that guitar and strum it and sing praises unto God. Honey, I'm glad no matter what disappointments we're in, we got a God who is faithful. We got a God who don't give up on you. Maybe your family's giving up on you. Maybe your job's giving up on you. But there's a God who loves you in the middle of your disappointments. Got up and preached the word of God. A wrecked home. A home that shouldn't be together. I watched that boy stand up with the touch of God. Hallelujah. I'm glad God's interested in our disappointments. I'm glad God cares about the hard times. I'm glad God cares about the disappointments, Mama. You praying, can I say, don't give up. Daddy, don't give up. God cares about those disappointments in our life. Miss Renee, come please. There was disappointments. There was the op opportunity that awaited. There's the observance of the amazing. You'll find there in verse number 8, Jesus come to him. He didn't say, how long you been here? What's going on? You know what God did? He had an answer for his problem. Yes. Look what he said. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. It was a powerful word. Matthew Henry said this. A divine word was a vehicle of divine power. Sure, Can I say this morning, you don't need no doctor's certificate to tell you that everything's going to be okay. Brother Eddie Davis told me this a long time ago. One word from God will remove all doubt. You know what you need this morning? You just need a word. The brother was talking about it, I couldn't help but think about when he was trying to go to Peru and Chile and all that stuff. You know what he said? Got a word. The guy last night opened the Bible. You know what he said? Brother Bush, you know what he said? I got a word. Can I say, Mama, this morning the only thing you need is a word. This man wanted help. Little did he know he was going to observe the maze. And maybe I say this. 
It was a personal word. The Bible said it said unto him. If God would have looked at all them boys and said, hey, rise, guess what? There would have been nobody left. But you know what? God is a personal God. It was a powerful as personal, but let me say this. It was prescription field. He said, rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And let me say, say this, and I'm finished. I promise. I preached way too long this morning. God was not going to get his bed up for him. You hear me this morning? That disappointment you're laying on and you're wallowing in. Jesus looked at him. He didn't say, I'm going to come get your bed. And then we're going to go. Know what he said, preacher? He said, you are going to have to rise. You got to get up. You got to stop laying down. You got to stop being sad, impotent man. You are going to have to get up. And then the very disappointment that you're laying on, I want you to take it up. And I want you to move forward. Here's what God wants to say this morning. A lot of us, we are laying in our disappointments. And we are expecting God to come get it for us. Maybe this morning you need to get your disappointment up. Take it to God. And say, God, I need to start walking again. God, I ain't been praising you like I should have. That disappointment's overwhelming. God did not make that man get up. It was by his own choice. You know what I learned about people that being miserable and being sad? Mr. Bree, you know what I've learned? They don't want no help. They like to stay there. This morning, your disappointment is God's appointment. God's not going to make you, sir, give that disappointment to Him. God is no respecter of persons. God is not going to force one of us in here this morning. Some of you this morning, you, God's given you another opportunity to get things right with Him. But may I say, God's not going to force you to do it. It's your choice. You got people that's been praying for you. May I say, they can't make you do it. It's your choice. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.